We all know nightclubs and bars are social settings. People dress up, they go out there, they have liquid courage, and then they feel like a social butterfly. But for some of us, we do not like that, but we wanna create a social circle. How do we do that? Because it seems like every social circle guy, every guy saying about networking says, go out, go party, go do this, go do that. And yes, that is absolutely correct. But what are the other ways that we can do it that we don't have to go to the nightclub? I'm here to tell you right now. So if you were ask a lot of people, how do you make a social circle without going to the nightclub? They would be stumped. They would go, I don't actually know. I'm not too sure. Even though it is one of the best ways to do it, there are ways to do it. But with sacrifices, let's just say we're sacrificing the nightclub and bar, you have to add different things into your repertoire in order to have the same success. Think about this, you go out to a bar or nightclub and you go out maybe twice a week. There's hundreds and hundreds of people that you can meet each week. So you're giving yourself opportunity to meet all these individuals, but when you're not putting the nightclub in your repertoire, then you have to add something else. And so what I urge you to do is understand that if you don't like the nightclub, what else are you gonna substitute it with? I've seen people make social circles in gyms, in communities such as hobbies. I've seen them make it online and I've seen them make it in business. They're the things that I've really seen it. Social media is gonna be one of the biggest tools that you have, but we have to really understand how do we do this? What are the ways to do this? Because in a nightclub, it's very easy. You get to know the managers, the promoters, the security guards, you go there often, you see a bunch of girls, you know the promoters and they bring girls and you can kind of level your way up and it's a network-a-thon. If you don't want that, how do you do it? So there's a couple of ways that we do it. Number one, goes back to my seven pillars of status where I talk about the logistics pillar. Back in the day, I lived in an apartment building called Circle on Cavill in the Gold Coast. Greatest place ever because over the pandemic period, I met probably 30 to 40 people in that spot just by going to the pool, the tanning area, the sauna, the spa. And it was a common thing that five o'clock every day, we'd go down the sauna and there'd be five or six guys that I would never have met before, met them, they're in business and this, we chat, there'd be a couple of girls, we'd invite them to parties that we were having. What I found was it wasn't so much the parties or the nightclubs that we'd invite all these people to, but the active place of going to the sauna each and every day. Remember in high school, you used to go to school each and every day, you get to know everybody. And then some years you'd have this group and then other years it would transform to this group and that group. And it's very similar, but you have to create your own social circle by first going to a lot of places. Here are some places you go to. Spas are a great one, saunas, gyms, a great one. You can go to restaurants, cafes, anywhere where there is a large group of people. Because you are taking the nightclub and the bars away, you have to substitute it with something else that there's gonna be a lot of people towards. If I said to you, okay, you have to choose the best apple out of this apple farm, but you only get one choice. Then I said to another guy, you get a thousand choices. What's the likelihood that the guy with a thousand choices is gonna pick a better apple? Of course, he has more options. We relate that to dating and social circle. If you meet a thousand people, what's the likelihood that you're gonna meet some cool ass people in there? Absolutely. What if you only see one or two people? What's the likelihood? Probably a little bit lower. So it's volume, volume, volume. You have to put yourself in scenarios and situations where there is a lot of people to get to know. Second thing is joining a community. It's very, very important. You hear this and you're like, ah, oh, this sounds like a bunch of crap. What community? Okay, let me, let me say, what do you like? You might like watches, you might like cars, you might like social media, anything like that. There's communities you like, okay, let's take social media, personal brands. Twitter is a great one to join. If you like cars, join car meetups. If you like watches, join watch meetups or watch communities. Heck, I was looking the other day, I like rings and there was this place where you can go and there's like 30 or 40 people and make your own rings. So I was like, I was telling my girl, I was like, yo, come and we'll make some rings. Go there and I found out it's all sold out. And I'm like, there's 40 or 50 people every seminar. There's 40 or 50 people that you're both joining a community of doing something together. Whether I meet one or two people. Before I, I, would, I was wanting to learn my social skills, I was wanting to learn success with women. I would go to these events and there might be 300 guys here at these events, these free speeches. But in that 300 people, there'd be five or six guys that I really, really, really get to know. Those are the five or six people I, initi I am the initiator and get their contact information, invite them out to different things, lunches, dinners, here and there. I do that because if I'm taking away the nightclub, 
I have to be proactive in meeting new people. There is a lot of people to meet in the world. They have so many guards and layers up that it stops them from meeting anybody. The reason why people like the nightclub or bars and say go do that is because people inherently lose their inhibitions and they start to relax and the facade and the walls come down and they're much more like people. But in the daytime, they're like, oh, uptight and like, I don't want to do anything. This is why it's very, very good. If we're not doing that, we have to facilitate it with something else, as I said, but also something else that allows them to drop their guard. What this is, is communities, activities. It might be a boxing class. It might be gym. It might be the rowing squad. The last one is travel. If you wanna make high quality friends, they might not be in your area. Your 5,000 person cow town may not have the types of people you want, but you have to travel to the places that you are. If you go to Miami, Florida, there's gonna be a lot of entrepreneurs. If you go to LA, there's gonna be a lot of actresses, artists, creative people there if you like that. If you wanna to fly to Dubai, you're gonna find a lot, a lot of car guys, a lot of watch guys, a lot of business guys, hustlers. You have to travel if you want an international circle, a big, big circle. If you're like, you know what? I'm never gonna do nightclubs, I'm never gonna do this, I'm never gonna do that. Then you have to substitute with travel, you have to substitute with communities, you have to substitute with people in large, large quantities. You see snowboarding and there's gonna be a whole community of guys and girls that are in snowboarding. The better and better you get, the more likelihood you're able to be initiated into the group. Then you've now met a whole bunch of people in the snowboarding community. I remember exact same thing with golf. You had to be good at golf to, in order to even befriend the people that were good at golf because they wanted to be around good people. The same thing with money. You gotta have money to be around people with money because people want to associate with people that are on their level to help them get better and better and better. So this is what you have to do if you wanna get rid of the night club or the bars. So I urge you to go do that. Now, I think one of the biggest things is getting communities. And a lot of guys have really taken a shine to my mentorship, social life mentoring. They've become pretty much Casanovas in their city. They've also become social media experts. And with those two things, as well as increasing their status, they've got a lot more friends, a lot more connections, and a lot more girls interested in them. These are the guys that uh, maybe don't wanna be super famous, but wanna have a social circle where they're not just placating and being friendly with girls, they actually wanna date girls, and that's the whole point. So I urge you to at least go check out my newsletter, at least go check out the things I have to say in that. It's absolutely free. Click the link down below. And what you're gonna find is that each week I drop a couple of emails every week about certain things that I cannot say on social media apps and actual practical advice. So I urge you to go check that out. And hey, if you wanna join Social Life Mentoring, my mentorship, you're more than welcome to click the link below and book a call. Now, in that mentorship, we have three courses. We have weekly calls. We also have a community full of like-minded individuals that are absolutely killing the game and leveling up their status, their business opportunities, their girls, as well as their network. So, Sam here, check it out, and I'll see you in the next video.